so I'm going to shift gears just a little bit and focus in a little bit more specifically on managing manure on small acreage equine operations. And most of this will emphasize composting as a management strategy. Okay. So we'll just discuss a little bit the whys and hows of composting horse manure. Um, Casey and, and Jeff both have already um, you know, brought, brought the idea of composting forward in their presentations. So won't, won't try to spend too much time on that, but just give a little bit more background on composting. And certainly with some emphasis on the advantages of composting as a means of managing horse stall waste and manure on horse properties, this can be especially um, helpful and actually pretty easy to do for some of our smaller scale operations. So one of the first things I, I challenge everybody with is when we're handling horses and enjoying the horse part of, of being horse owners or horse farm managers, you know, how do we even envision the stall waste in the manure? Do we truly see it as just waste? Is it a nuisance? Um, is it a potential nutrient source? And of course we know that it can be. Um, you know, what, what are we having to do already on farm to dispose of that waste? So is it costly? Are we paying a company maybe to haul that off property or coming up with some other, other mechanisms that maybe have more cost associated with those disposal um, methods? And potentially for some of us, is it even a source of disease or pathogens? And so that's already come up a little bit with some of the other livestock species. So anytime we can do something to manage our nutrients on the farm that also may have some benefit for horse health, that's really a, a good way to look at this. Um, so being a little bit more proactive and maybe um, a little bit more positive about manure management and that can go a long way to, to having some success. So we all know that manure happens anytime we have horses. Um, we do see a lot of waste generated. So I'll give a little bit of statistics on that, but um, mostly what we're talking about here are the feces, the urine, and of course with horses, especially if these are animals that are spending any time, any amount of time during the day in stalls or undercover in even outdoor run out type sheds that have bedding material in it, we have to account for that bedding material also. Um, and that can certainly generate a lot of waste in addition to the, the amount of feces and urine that we see excreted from these horses every day. So again, we can think of this manure as a source of nutrients in terms of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then in talking about manure management, um, certainly that requires responsible action on the part of the horse owner or the barn manager. So we have to think about storage. So where and how are we um, at least temporarily or even permanently keeping this manure on site? And then of course, ideally, you know, can we have some strategy for disposition? So again, if that's removing, hauling that manure off site, reducing volume through composting, which we'll talk about, um, or land applying that in some cases too, if you actually have some good, good pasture space and are utilizing forages um, for, for dietary consumption for your horses. Um, so we'll come back to that. So in many cases, we really are truthfully dealing with a mountain of manure. A thousand pound, average thousand pound horse will you know, go to the bathroom. They will defecate um, anywhere from four to 13 times per day. So total manure production per day per thousand pound horse is around 50 pounds of manure per day. And that is just the, the, the poop and the urine. Um, so pretty much that is just the manure we're talking about. That doesn't even account for bedding material added in such as straw or wood shavings. So what this equates to is this thousand pound horse will produce about nine tons of manure per year. And that nine tons of manure will contain 11 pounds of nitrogen, two pounds of phosphorus, and approximately eight pounds of potassium. So again, a source of nutrients, but a lot of waste generated. If we think about this visually, if you have that 12 by 12 box stall on your farm, we could fill that entire 12 by 12 box stall pretty much to the ceiling of the barn with the amount of manure and waste that's generated from one horse each year. So that is a lot to deal with. Um, this a little bit more in terms of some stats. So what are we talking about with the manure plus the bedding material? This is about 2.4 cubic feet per day that we're dealing with, which equals almost 900 cubic feet per year or 32 cubic yards. So again, just to give you some sort of visual, if you will, of, of how much we're producing. So this bottom picture here, um, 
Maybe that's not quite what we're seeing on our small farm operations. Um, this is actually a picture taken from a, a larger um, teaching unit, but when that unit was just stockpiling their manure, you know, even just over a year or so, the amount that was accumulated is, is pretty overwhelming if we're not managing it. Um, so again, we're, we're trying to get away from this, this bottom situation. So composting manure, why compost? When we compost this waste material, uh, we are producing a more homogeneous material. This makes it much more easy to spread if we're gonna land apply that. And also just in general, it becomes easier to manage. Um, it, it makes a more homogeneous material in the sense that we do have some breakdown of that material, especially with horse um, related waste. You know, we, we wanna break down some of that spent hay that might be mixed in with, with the poop and the urine, also the, the bedding material. We also potentially have a much more marketable product. Um, compost makes a great soil amendment. It also makes for a great growth media. Um, you know, this even includes things like growing roses or growing um, or, or feeding um, earthworms for, for other industries. Um, it can be used as mulch or also certainly as a slow release fertilizer. So there is some benefit and maybe even some marketability to this compost. Well composted manure will have an earthy smell, so we lose that, that odorous manure smell and we get a very nice soil-like material, um, kind of a, we describe it as a, a hummus-like material. And the great part about this is, there's a little bit of a, a big range here, but we can see anywhere from 25 up to 50% volume reduction when we compost our stall waste. So again, even if you don't have a lot of acreage and, and good pasture grass to apply those nutrients to apply that compost to, you at least at that point have a reduced volume that you then have to figure out where that's gonna go off your farm. Um, so that, that can be very helpful. Through the composting process, the heat that's generated um, as that, that material degrades, we will have destruction of pathogens and we also will have destruction of weed seeds due to the action of composting. So that's also a very good thing in terms of land applying that as a soil amendment um, for your pastures because we're eliminating those weed seeds, um, their ability to, to grow weeds. We certainly have a lot of weed issues in our, our small horse paddocks. That just seems to be inevitably a problem with, with a lot of our pastures and our small acreage farms. So anything you can do in terms of overall management to mitigate that problem in your fields and your pastures is, is very good and composting can help do that. Um, we're also going to, to have a good chance of destroying um, parasite eggs and, and not letting parasites reproduce and, and grow. So that's another good thing, especially if we're gonna land apply that and spread that back to our fields. So just a little bit about the science of composting, um, just kind of have this schematic here, but essentially we know that this is a, a very similar process such as natural decomposition. However, we're setting this system up um, with our materials, so our manure, our bedding substrate. We have that carbon and nitrogen interacting so that through some management, we're actually accelerating this natural decomposition process. We're mixing that organic material um, with other ingredients in a manner that optimizes microbial growth. So through this, again, we're gonna have volume reduction because we're reducing the mass um, in that material, letting those microorganisms, letting those bugs generate um, the water, the heat, some of the gases that we get off that pile. But in that process, we're breaking down a lot of those materials. So again, this should equal this very nice soil-like um, material, this hummus type material. So building a compost system, I'm gonna get into a little bit of the how-tos on small farms. There are um, several things obviously here, a few key bullet points um, that we just wanna talk about for a few minutes that you have to think about um, ideally ahead of time as you look at your farm site and your acreage, but location of the pile is very important. And so there's a couple things we can do. Um, Casey and Jeff already showed a couple examples of bin systems. And so especially for small farms, small scale bin systems can be really, really helpful, um, very easy to manage. And I'll show you guys some examples in just a minute of some of those actually on some horse farms here in Florida. Um, but the location of the pile is very, very important. So you want to identify a fairly flat site that's away from low-lying areas because we certainly don't want to be amassing or piling this material 
in low spots on the farm where water can collect. Um, we don't, we don't want to see that happening. We also have to abide by setbacks. So there are some rules and regulations um, based on best management practices manuals, which may be uh, fairly specific to your state or, or locality. So here in Florida, for example, we want the location of our, our manure storage or our compost bins to be 300 feet away from public potable wells, at least 200 feet away from water courses and sinkholes, so you know open, open body water um, on the property, and at least 100 feet away from private potable wells. So again, this is sort of a, maybe not a loose guideline, but for Florida specific, these are our setbacks that we want people to, to be thinking about and, and abiding to, but um, again, for your specific state or situation, you may need to talk to your extension office, some of your specialists to make sure that, that you're meeting those guidelines. And then another thing is consider your neighbors. So make sure that, that where you're you know, constructing your bins for composting or you're putting that manure storage area, make sure that it is relatively out of view and, and downwind from your neighbors. There's also some things you can do in terms of aesthetics and to reduce um, odor and, and, and flies and things, and, and we'll try to come back to some of that, but really just even obscuring it with some shrubbery or some fencing, something that just blocks the view from your neighbors, just to be considerate. So what about managing the pile? To actually have a, a big enough pile or windrow, what we want to see happen here is the minimum pile, pile size should be at least one cubic yard. One cubic yard is roughly the size of kind of your standard washer or dryer, so like washing machine or dryer um, that you have in your laundry room at home, but you need a pile at least that big so that we can effectively get that pile to heat up, and that's really important for getting that, that pile going. Um, sometimes to get a pile started, if you already even do some small scale, um, just sort of kitchen or, or backyard composting for your garden, Taking some fresh, you know, like, like finished compost as an inoculant, you can actually put some of that down first and then start amassing your pile with your stall waste and your manure. Um, the temperature, what we want to see is this pile should be generating enough heat internally to reach temperatures between 130 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there has been a little bit of research done as far as, you know, killing pathogens and reducing weed seeds in those piles, um, we want that in that range for at least a few days um, consecutively to make sure that, that we're destroying those pathogens and weed seeds. There's a couple things we can do to aerate the pile. Um, you can turn that pile and aerate mechanically. And again, a lot of us, if we're small scale, we don't necessarily have a lot of equipment. Um, so if it does become too laborsome to turn the piles, there are some other ways that we can introduce some oxygen into the pile. And one of the best ways to do that is almost to kind of use a little bit of like a chimney. Um, you can take PVC pipes and you can actually cut small holes along that PVC pipe, maybe a, an inch and a half to two inches apart, all the way down that tube and put that PVC pipe either kind of, you know, upright as sort of a chimney or horizontally through the pile, and that will help introduce some oxygen into the pile without having to constantly turn that pile. Some piles, even if they sit fairly static, eventually that material does compost and it breaks down, but certainly aerating it and being a little bit more, um, more vigilant of, of temperatures, you know, using a compost thermometer like that's pictured here, taking temperatures periodically, monitoring that, and turning those piles, that will speed the process. You may need to add water. Um, so we want the compost to be moist, but not too wet. Um, there are moisture meters for maybe between 60 and $100 that you can purchase, um, depending on how scientific you want, you want your small scale operation to get with your compost system. But another thing you can do is just, you know, by tactile, you know, touch and, and vision, you can kind of assess how wet or how moist your pile is. So one of the rules of thumb that we use is if you reach in and grab some of that, that composting material, it should feel like a wrung out sponge. So you can kind of wad it into a ball and it shouldn't be crumbly. If it's crumbling out of your hand, it's certainly too dry. If you can wring it out and literally generate water dripping down, then it's, it's too wet. So that's just kind of a, a, a little tip or, or trick of the trade, so to speak. 
Amending with nitrogen, um, so especially on horse facilities where we're using a lot of wood material um, as bedding substrate in our stalls, that contributes a lot of carbon and that might start to create some issues with our carbon to nitrogen ratio. For really effective composting, breaking down that material, we like to see a carbon nitrogen ratio around 25 or 30 to one. So sometimes with those wood products, we just have way too much carbon. So sometimes it's important to amend that pile with some, um, maybe a commercial fertilizer or some urea, adding some nitrogen back onto that pile. Or for horse facilities, one of the best things you can do is just go around your paddocks, pick up just raw manure, just, just the little road apples, and just add fresh manure to the pile without bedding. So that's another way that we can introduce just nitrogen into the pile. So this just shows you um, some composition of stall waste produced by Florida horse operations. This comes from a previous master's student here at UF, some of his work. But this just shows you, gives you an idea based on the, the bedding material. This was looking at spent hay. Some of our Florida uh, horse producers will use spent bahia or Bermuda grass hay as a, as a bedding material in stalls. So they looked at hay, straw, and then wood shavings. So if you look at the percent nitrogen, percent carbon, and then this carbon to nitrogen ratio, Again, we can see that with the hay and the straw bedding material, we're a lot closer to that ideal C to N ratio. Whereas when we have wood bedding material like shavings, we have a carbon to nitrogen ratio here of 77 to one. So it's usually gonna take that material a lot longer to break down. It may not compost as effectively. We're gonna have to manage those piles or those windrows more, um, but we can also add some, some additional nitrogen to help that process. So how do we determine bin size? So here's an example calculation. This is together a simple two bin compost system for a small horse operation. So this is looking at sort of more of a, a recreational backyard horse operation with two horses. So if we look at our volume of manure and bedding generated each day, we can calculate that out because we have some values here that we can use. So if we're generating two cubic feet per horse, we have two horses, that's four cubic feet generated per day. Then we can look at you know, how long, how much capacity do we need for storage? So if we're going to store and have this on site for at least four months or 121 day, or 120 days, we have to then figure out what, what our bin sizes are going to be. What does our whole system need to look like? So then the amount of manure generated, we can look at that four cubic feet per day times the number of days we need for storage. That gives us a total um, size of 480 cubic feet. If we want a two bin system, we then divide that total cubic feet by the size of each bin in order to determine what, what each bin needs to be. So in this example, um, we basically want a two bin system that's going to give us 240 cubic feet. So two bins that are eight by eight by four feet. So here's some examples um, on some of our, our Florida equine operations. And again, these are small to medium sized horse operations, anywhere from two, maybe up to eight to 10 horses. Um, the, the photo here on the left, this is a, a little bit more expensive, a little bit nicer um, option here. They have poured concrete, so they have an impervious surface here at the bottom of, of a two bin system. These are roughly, um, you know, eight, eight by eight by four foot tall walls, and it's a two bin system. So the idea here is that you start compiling all of your stall waste in bin number one, and as you amass more of that material, you can turn that material, manage that a little bit, but then you can move it in to the next bin. This is gonna be your little bit more mature, more finished product. You can still manage this, but now you've opened up bin one for the raw material again. So for a lot of small operations, a two to three bin system works really nicely because it's an automatic process of getting your little small front end loader in there and being able to move that material over. And in that process, you are aerating it. You'll notice here that just to keep, um, during heavy rain events, to keep water off the pile, they've just put a, a tarp here. So that can be a very cost-effective, easy thing to do to, to help keep the pile from getting drenched or, or too wet, especially during heavy rainfall. The, the picture on the right here, um, this is a three bin system. Also, they're using tarps to keep some of the rain off. Um, they've also put some rubber mats at the front just to reduce runoff at the front of the bins. But this is a nice example also of just a very inexpensive, made mostly just from um, fence boards and extra posts that were laying around the farm. 
they've just constructed that free bin system. Just a couple more examples. Um, the one on the left here, this was really um, kind of unique and, and kind of cool that they use some just lattice. This is just wood lattice material. This is great because it's inexpensive and easy to install, but you guys will notice too that the other great thing about this is because it has holes, it's automatically allowing more ventilation and movement between the, the three bins and between the walls. So you're introducing a little bit more oxygen that way into the, the system. They've also used just some um, sheeting material to kind of make a little, a little roof here, just to keep it from getting too wet. If your piles are getting too dry, um, sometimes what you can do, this is good for, for water quantity and, and protecting water uh, quantity for us too. Before you dump those, those buckets out of your horse's stall, you can actually put that on your wheelbarrow or front end loader loads of, of stall waste before you add it, those fresh materials to the pile. So that's another way to introduce water fairly easily and effectively. Um, another example of just some cheaper kind of inexpensive materials, this is just laid out on the flat ground, free bin system, again with lattice work, allowing some ventilation between the piles. You guys can see here, this is a really nice example, this picture on the right. Bin one has the fresh raw material. Bin two has compost that has probably been there for a month or two. Um, with some aeration and some management. And then if you look at bin three, that is the more mature finished material. And you can see how nice and soil and hummus that, that final bin material looks. So that's a very nice example of how they're using that three bin system to rotate through their materials and to manage the piles. These are some recent examples on an on-farm project that we have going in collaboration with the Southwest Florida Water Management District. This is a three-bin system um, that a small-scale equine operation in Ocala built for the project. So again, these are eight by eight by four foot bins, three-bin system. This is another picture of that system once they've started to um, put some, some raw material in there. This is a, a neat example also. This is what we consider an, an adapted O2 compost. There is a company out there called O2 compost that has more of an automated aeration system. They have bin systems that you can purchase. Um, I think starting cost on those are maybe around $1,500. So this was a family that has two horses at home. Um, it's an older couple and so they were trying to reduce labor and make this process as easy as they could for themselves. So they're using PVC pipes and a little pump system to inject air into the bins. So this actually happens to be a four bin system. It takes them about a month with two horses to amass enough material to really start composting in that first bin. But again, then they just rotate that more mature material through each bin and start again on the opposite side with their fresh material. And then they're land applying it, they're spreading it back out on this pasture here, um, but that's worked really great for them and reduced some of the labor of turning. Here's some troubleshooting tips. Um, and we did supply um, this Dr. Warren 2005 Florida Equine Institute Proceedings um, article for, for the audience today. So this will be something that you'll have access to. This is a great table to help you troubleshoot issues such as the pile not heating up correctly or enough to, to really generate good heat. If the compost has a foul smell, if the compost pile doesn't seem to be breaking down very effectively. These are all some, some possible causes and then solutions to those problems. So some great troubleshooting tips on, on what you might need to adjust in the pile. Um, and again, this is not just a science, this is quite a bit of art involved and just some practice and trial and error. Um, so if you're just thinking about starting some composting on a small operation or helping clients with this, you may have to try some things. And um, there, there will be some things that might go a little bit wrong the first time, but this will kind of help with some of those questions. So in summary, Manure management is an important aspect of horse ownership, something that we should always be thinking about on especially these small scale operations because a lot of these operations are in closer contact with some of our urban areas and, and other neighbors. So that's something very important to keep in mind. Um, and especially as it relates to water quality, we have a lot of our, our equine facilities that are in sensitive areas such as spring shed areas um, and, and spring shed VMAPs. So it's very important to consider water quality. So again, location of those piles trying to reduce the volume, eliminating or at least mitigating runoff and leaching of those materials is very important. Composting is great because it accelerates that natural decomposition process of, of that stall waste and of that manure and gives us some really great benefits. So essentially we're recycling that organic material 
It helps decrease the odor associated with, with managing and storing stall waste on your property. We're ultimately reducing the, the mass and the volume that has to be disposed of. And again, from a marketability standpoint or use on farm, it can be a great soil amendment, which will add value to that manure and that stall waste, but may help you with your pasture management as well. Composting doesn't have to be complicated. As I mentioned, you know, it's best to customize a composting system to your specific situation, to your farm, and to your labor um, and time constraints. Monitoring the piles and making adjustments um, will help improve the process. And again, that's a little bit of an art. Um, and we, we've given you some resources that hopefully will help with that. Um, and then certainly through the eExtension website, not only through this learning community, but also eExtension Horses has some really great guides and fact sheets and some tutorials on composting and, and other things related to manure management. So with that, um, just a few acknowledgements here to some colleagues who have helped with a lot of this information and some of the references um, that we've provided. So mentioned e-extension. Um, there's also some great information out there if you are considering large animal mortality composting as a means for disposing of carcasses on site. Um, so for large animals, including cattle and horses, composting can be an effective means for, for um, you know, mitigating having to, to work with renderers or if you're, you know, in a, in a zone or in a location that you cannot effectively bury large animal carcasses on property, composting can, can be an option. So there's some resources there as well. So with that, thank you very much. And I will turn it over to Tommy Bass.